Hello, we are here to talk about creating a new bank account. The first thing we want to do is add a new GL account number to go with our new bank account. So I'm going to go ahead into the chart of accounts. I'm going to add my new account number. I want to place my account category and sub account category if you do these functions. I also want to have it where the direct posting is unselected. That way the system, the user will have to go through a bank account in order to um, actually post to this account. So I also, as I am putting this in, it's reminding me at the top that I do need to generate and update my account schedules related to the fact that I updated or changed my categories and subcategories. If you don't use this function to create your financial statements, you just want to make sure you remember to go out to any of your financial statements that use this account and place it into that financial report. So you're either going to do it through the GL account categories of generate your financials, or you're going to actually do it manually. The other thing you want to try to do is remember to indent your chart of accounts. So that way it updates the indentation and aligns it where it needs to be placed. So I have my GL account number created. I'm now going to go into my bank account and create a new bank account. You can have it give you the next incrementing number or you can add a value for the number yourself. And I'm going to chase. So there are a few fields that we can talk about that you might want to add. Bank account number, if you're going to do ACH, it's going to need to use that value. It might need it for other pieces of the information, so you can certainly add that. You can block it if you're no longer using it. You can also use it as a default for that particular currency. So if you're doing, say, Canadian dollars, Australian dollars, the euro, and you need a bank account for that, then you can have it defaulted for the currency in which you have selected. You can also enable it for intercompany transactions. So if you do a bank to bank, then you can do that also. Down here, you can also, if you're going to link your account or do it with a man or create your own bank statement import, then you can also disable the automatic payment matching if you don't want it to do that. There's also matching tolerance. So you can do it by a percentage or amount and you can input the value. For the banking communication information, sometimes you might want a phone number or the person that is your contact there, so it makes it a little easier to find that information. Under the posting, I want to reference what might be my last check number or a check number I can use for testing. I also want to enter what might be the last remittance advice and the last time I did a statement for the account. So the last check number, if this is a new, brand new account, I might have it starting at a particular number, so I'm going to put that in. I'm going to put in for an RA number, and I might just start it at the 100, and I'm going to at least put in a one for the last um, payment number. And then I also have if I wanted a balance for the last one, but the important field is going to be this bank account posting group. This is how I'm going to tie it to my GL account. So if I go ahead and select new, and put Chase Checking, and I'm going to put in my new account that I just created. So I need to select this. And this is what's going to tie the transactions together. And then we also have information related to a transfer. So I will go ahead and remove out of this account. I'm going to come down here to my other checking account that I have set up. So we can just kind of take a look at that information. So as you can see, the information starts updating as to the last of something that was run. Regarding the transfer, this is related to mostly for ACH, but sometimes it's also for positive pay in the pay bank payment. So if I'm going to do ACH, and I do a drop down here, I have the different types of countries that I'm working with that I'm going to export the file for. So the most common one is going to be the US. I want to give it an ACH export file name. So that way it can increment. So it at least has to have a number in it and then it will automatically create from there. And here it tells me the automatic creation number that it uses. I also have the transit number of the bank. So this has to be a valid amount. You can actually look them up 
online if you need it, but the system is going to verify that that's a good amount. And then you'll notice these four drop downs. So this is for my bank statement import format, and it goes and is associated using um, the data definition. So it's everything that's been assigned as a bank export import setup. The ACH file is going to be also a default here. I'm going to bring up the list. The system normally will default you a CCD, a default, and an IAT. It also can do a CDX if you needed to. So these are just different options, but you want to make sure you know which one you want to select and that it has been tested. Then I have my positive pay export. So if I'm going to do a positive pay, that's also set up in the data definition. And this list here is filtered by anything that would be a positive pay one. The EFT IAT export format is when you want to actually bring in some um, aged accounts receivable transactions. And if I go ahead and show more, there's just some other transactional values if you needed that for some of the foreign currency accounts that might need to be set up. If I go ahead and I take a look up here, so just a couple things off the menu bar up here is we have a positive pay export. So if you're creating the file and you're going to do use positive pay that's set up down here, then once you have processed the checks and posted them, you'll come in here to run your positive pay export. So if I come in here, I select my positive pay, then it'll tell me the last time that it ran an update, what's the cutoff date for what I want to run. I can also filter for the different types of transactions. So if I only want it for computer checks, I can do that. If I select that, then it will limit what my view is. And these other ones would be the ACH file. So from here, I can just go ahead and select export, and it's going to create the file based on what I have in my setup. And then it will output that information to a text file, which you then can upload to your bank. So it does not do an automatic upload, but it does give you the ability to manually do it yourself. I also have bank statement service, so I can link to an online bank account. If I select this, it will come up and normally will tell me that my bank feed service has not been enabled. Do I wish to enable it? Yes, I do. You do want to read this information. I'm going to accept. Once it does the connection, it will then come up or allow you to type in the bank that you're looking for. So if I'm looking for National Bank of Arizona, for example, there is the bank and I would select it and then I would log in from here. The next thing I want to talk about is just what the options are under bank account. This is where you can add dimensional information, enter a comment about the bank. I can pull up my statements or my posted bank reconciliation worksheets depending which method is used. I have ledger entries and check ledger entries. Ledger entries are any entries made to the bank, whether it's a deposit or a payment, whether it's done rather through a journal or the bank deposit area. A check ledger entry is strictly any entry that is related as a check. So it will be either marked as a manual check or it'll be marked as a computer check. When I'm in here, if I wanted to, I can void a posted check. If I select the check and I select void check, it'll bring up an option for my void date, the type of void that I want to do. If I do an unapply and void check, it's going to unapply the invoices and or credit memos apply to it, and then it will just void the check. If I do void check only, it will just void the check and not unapply any of the entries. It does not make a credit memo related to the invoices. It does not assume that you want to do something to the invoices. It just assumes that you want to do something to the check itself. Also under the actions, I could send an email out. I can go in here and I can run my positive pay export again if I needed to. I could pull up a journal payment journal if I wanted to. Then I have the bank account where I can pull up my posted bank deposits. Once again, my positive pay entries. I can also run a payment reconciliation journal. The history will be of the sent emails. And then I do have a few reports that are available. Check details and detail trial balance are always helpful reports of tracking any information. Thank you.